Hey y'all. When people think of the space program, they think of Kennedy Space Center where we launch things into space, or Johnson Space Flight Center where Mission Control resides. That would be a little bit of a mistake. I am standing at the spot where the United States space program began. Behind me is the test stand for the Redstone rocket. And the Redstone rocket was the launch vehicle that put the first two Americans in space, Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom. Those flights were suborbital. They went up, they touched space, they came back down. But this is it, this is where it all began. So let's get started with the show. Hey guys, and welcome to the show. Today I have Yuri with us. Yuri, how's it going, man? Pretty good. It's good to be back here after a long, long, long time. Yeah, I'm glad that that uh, we're able to do this. Yes. Um, the uh, the uh, company that we were using to produce these, um, you know, isn't going to do that any longer. So I'm stuck doing it myself. So we'll see oh. how this goes. Yeah. Is is that the, <laughs> is that the first episode doing this? It's the second one. The first one we did was uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, and it worked out pretty well. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teams make things pretty easy. Yeah, I trust your editing capability, so I think it'll be good. Yeah, don't worry. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll make you look good. I won't publish it if it doesn't. <laughs> All right. All right, so you're a program manager with the Azure Sentinel Group. Yeah, Azure Security Center, I'm primarily a uh, PM for Azure Security Center, but I'm also handling uh, Azure Sentinel. Uh, Azure yeah. Sentinel is very new, right? We released it in uh, public preview uh, April uh, at the RSA Secure Conference. Um, it was uh, really a big, big buzz uh, in the security field because it was the first ever Microsoft uh, SIM. Um, so, Customers were not expecting that we we were going to that direction, uh, so it was uh, we had a really good feedback from the market. Uh, it, it it really gave a whole dimension of uh, of how use the cloud to do not only data ingestion but also to process process that data using threat intelligence and everything, and then give some uh, results back to, to customer to investigate or respond to an incident and things like that. Oh, that's awesome. So so I've, we were talking before the show, and I've actually never dug into Sentinel. I've, I've heard the term, but I, I, I don't really, I didn't really dig into what it does yet. So, um, so I'm excited about this. I hear you're going to share your screen and give us some demos. Yep. yep. <clears throat> We, I can share my screen, give you some demos. Uh, let me do that right now. Just a minute. Okay, so here we go. Let me know if you can see it. Yep, I can see it. It's up and running. All right, so in Azure Portal, if you go to all services and you just type Sentinel uh, right yep. there, uh, that's you're gonna see the little icon Azure Sentinel, right? As you can see, it's in preview. So I'm gonna click on Azure Sentinel uh, to launch the the dashboard. Now, if you do not have any workspace, you're gonna have to connect to a workspace or create a new workspace from scratch. And and I'm not sure if you you understand the concept of workspace, but it's basically where you're gonna store your data. Right, the data that you're collecting, where you're gonna store is on this workspace, right? So you can use a new workspace or you can leverage a workspace that you already have. So I'm gonna uh, switch to this uh, environment here that I have that already has a workspace and is already fully populated. In other words, I'm already uh, ingesting data from different data sources. Because step number one in any uh, SIEM platform is the data ingestion, right? You, the the whole uh, goal of a scene is to collect data and rationalize that data to make it easier for you to take actions uh, when you are interpreting that data. So the first step is data con uh, in, so in Sentinel is the data connectors. So okay. the way that we organize the data connectors is really to make it easier for uh, the SecOps to quickly connect to the data 
based on Microsoft platform as well as different partners. As you can see here on the Data Connect, we have uh, Amazon Web Services, Azure AD. So all these data connectors, most of the of the time, is one click experience. I want to connect to my Azure AD. I, I go uh, open the connector page and then I connect to that service. Yeah. And when I say connect, what I'm really doing is I'm bringing uh, the logs to sent to Azure Sentinel, right? So I can, in my case here, I'm already ingesting the signing logs from Azure AD and the audit logs from uh, Azure AD is already connected. That's why I have the disconnect button here. But basically, is a connect button and that's it. You you're done. So it's okay, very so, very straightforward. So, yeah. So so uh, so you connect to a service. You pull the logs down from that service, and then Sentinel analyzes those logs. Is that how yeah, this so works? Like almost there, right? Because what happened is, uh, first step, workspace, for, so I can store my data. Then I yeah. have the data, data connected to put that data on that workspace. And then, after I connect to all my different data sources, I'm going to start to see that my dashboard here is going to populate those events and alerts over time which already gives me uh, some important information that I can query. Uh, as I go through here, I can just click on, for example, alerts, and then it's going to open up log analytics, and I'm going to have all my alerts uh, uh, that belong to that workspace showing up, right? It's basically a query using Custo query language, right? Have yeah. you, you, heard, you heard about Custo query language, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is a custom query language that returns this value here. So this is a custom query language, right? Yeah. And then I can start look into that log and start to investigate and all that. That that's that's great, but the true value starts when you start creating your own analytics, right? You can create custom alerts and we call analytics based on uh, the data that you have, based on the knowledge that you have about your data based on indications of compromise that are uh, out there. Let's let's use an example. Let's say back in the day when we had Petya, uh, as soon as Petya uh, had a, the outbreak, we didn't really have too much information about Petya, but we did have some secure researchers that were able to determine uh, some artifacts that could be used as indications of compromise. So having those indications of compromise helps you to create your custom detections, and that's where you're going to add it here on this custom detection. Uh, if I open, for example, uh, this one here, it's called PowerShell Empire. When I open yeah. this one here, you see that this is nothing more than a custom query language query against the workspace that have, that uh, you have the data, right? So if I look at here, this is the uh the uh, qkl for this particular alert okay yeah. and i can define some three shows here i can uh, define alert scheduling i can even uh, select a playbook to run uh, if this alert is triggered which is pretty cool because a playbook is nothing more than the logic apps workflow so you can create a, a set of actions that uh, that you can run upon receiving this alert, right? Let's say, well, I want to automatically send an email to uh, the SecOps teams. I want to automatically create a new incident on my ticket system. I want to do this, that. I mean, you can go as deep as I want to run this piece of code when this happens, for example. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so these are the analytics. And a lot of time when we are uh, showing this to customers, they were like, well, there are, you, you guys have a lot on your demo environment. How do you populate that? Uh, we have a community page, right, uh, that we put together. Uh, the Azure Sentinel team put together this community page that can you can leverage. It's basically a GitHub repository. You can go to the detections folder. Yeah. And there you have a bunch of examples of detections. For example, if I go to security event, I have uh, the example that I was using uh, about the uh, uh, PowerShell Empire. I have failed logons. Here's the PowerShell Empire uh, example that I was using. And here's the query. As you can see, it's pretty 
BigQuery, right? So we provide uh, this to you. You can just copy and paste and, and create your own analytic. You can use this as as the foundation to build your own. But in other words, we offer all those samples that you can utilize as uh, detections. Yeah. Wow, oh, that's really cool, man. And I love the fact that we don't just limit it to Microsoft uh, endpoints, right? You've got AWS in there, which I think is pretty neat. Yeah, we have not only AWS, but we have a lot of other partners uh, in the data connectors. As you can see here, Checkpoint, Cisco ASA, right? F5, Fortinet. And if the vendor that uh, you have, for example, on premise is not on this list, let's say you have a firewall, you know, like Thomas Firewall, dot com that is yeah. out of this list here you can connect via Ceph format assuming that your file supports syslog and Ceph format right oh so, look at that yeah so that's uh, also allows you to customize uh, a lot yeah so if there's not a provider we can essentially create a provider as long as they as they, long as they, they uh, support. you know adhere to specific specifications and and right. apis and stuff yeah Kind of the, other, the other thing that I think is, uh, is, is pretty cool here is that every time that we trigger uh, the alert, we create also an incident. Uh, so think about this as a case management system, right? Where I have my new incident here uh, and that incident, I can change the severity because I did the initial triage and now I think that this is not actually medium, it's actually low, so I can change the severity, I can change the status to say that this incident is in progress, I'm investigating right now. I can assign to another analyst uh, and, and that the list goes on and on, right? So I have yeah. all this capability built in into the platform. So let's say that I receive this new incident and I want to investigate I have the capability to go here on this investigate button and, uh, and visualize this pretty amazing uh, uh, dashboard that shows me uh, the correlation of the different artifacts, right? The alert here is the anonymous login, right? Uh, and it was Darcy that triggered this. But when I uh, put my mouse over Darcy, it, I have that uh, related alerts um, option that yeah. if I click here, it will pivot more information. So it will expand and show me, oh, look at that. I'm pivoting that information. And now I know that uh, uh, Darcy has also done some mass download activity in the past, uh, <laughs> ran, ran a suspicious PowerShell activity, right? I have all that information here available. And here's, yeah. the po here's the really power of data correlation, because for example, the mass download, when I click here on the mass download, who is giving me this information is Cloud App Security, because I'm ingesting data from Microsoft uh, Cloud App Security, right? Yeah. So if I look to the anonymous uh, uh, sign-in, is Sentinel that is giving me this information. So this shows me that I'm doing data correlation activity here. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Not, yeah, I'm not looking only to one data set. I'm looking across different data set and then correlating those events. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really that, cool. That's pretty cool. And you can you can say you can set things up, I assume. I, th I think you talked about this earlier, but you can set up alerts that say, hey, if, if uh, you know, user X logs in more than five times anonymously or if we get more than five anonymous log in, logins, perform this functionality. Right. Yeah, so in this case, what you would do is you're going to create the analytics, which is nothing more than a custom alert. You're going to create that custom alert, and then you're going to link to that alert a playbook. So as soon as the, the alert is triggered, the playbook will run and do whatever you want to do, you know. Okay, uh, yeah. You know, uh, disable that user account or do whatever you think is necessary uh, to respond to that incident. So that's the idea about not only trigger a new incident, but also respond upon receiving that incident. Okay, cool. I like it. Yeah. Now there is another dimension here. Uh, a lot of uh, SOC, uh, security operations centers these days, they have a team that will do uh, the reactive type of incident response, right? I mean, yeah. something happened, they go, they go there and do it. And some other teams, they do more proactive 
what we call at Microsoft, we call the proactive hunters, right? Yeah. So if we look from the threat hunting perspective, we also have the hunting dashboard. So what we enable uh, threat hunters to look at the data and perform some queries even before uh, an, ac an action takes place. So we have a bunch of examples here out of the box of uh, queries that uh, you can use. So you can select uh, the uh, query and you then click on run query. And if something comes up, it's going to show here uh, under the results here. See loading zero results. Yeah. And the, the, the good thing here is as a threat hunter, I want also to know in which phase of the cyber queue chain this uh, query is going to be more effective. So this one, Azure Storage Key Enumeration, usually happens during the lateral movement. The DNS high reverse DNS count usually happens on the discovery uh, phase of the cyber queue chain. So all those things will help you to identify uh, in which phase of the uh, cyber queue chain that operation took place. And uh, if the data that you have right now has any indications of the attack that matches with that query. Yeah, that's really cool, man. I really like this. In fact, <clears throat> I see a, a huge use for this at, at my customer. Yeah. I mean, right now is in preview. Uh, customers can can just go ahead and start using it and and, and validate. That is what's happening right now. Is uh, customers they are uh, validating those use case scenarios, and we already have case study uh, publicly available of uh, companies that are using already this in production. Wow! Yeah. Do you have links to that stuff? Is there a link to, to the like case any study? document? Yes. Yeah. Send me the link to the case study, and I'll throw it up in the show notes. Yeah. And also, if you've got um, any links to any documentation on this that I can share other than the case study, that'd be great. Like yeah. how to create the alerts, et cetera. Yeah, I have the links for the documentation. And uh, myself, Nicholas DiCola, and Jonathan Troll, we are writing the Azure Sentinel book uh, for Microsoft Press. Uh, and Johnson is going to, to, to write the foreword for the book. So we have a really good team putting together a, a good book uh, for Azure Sentinel. Wow, that's awesome. Well, man, thank you so much for showing this to us. Yeah, I appreciate the time again. And uh, let's let's try to do this more often, not take a, a one year be between shows. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. You send me anything you want to do, and I'll put you on the schedule. All right, that, that, that sounds fair. I appreciate How's that. that. Yeah. yeah, I love yeah, it. You just, thank you. you just let me know when you want to do a show, and I'll and I'll do a show. I appreciate it. Thanks, Lex. I appreciate that. Man, anytime. And guys, uh, um, hopefully you got a lot out of it this week. Like I said, I'll put the links to uh, all of this stuff in the case, in the, uh, sorry, in the uh, show notes. And uh, uh, without further ado, Yuri, you're awesome. I really appreciate it. Uh, but uh, guys, that's your taste of premiere. Thank you very much, Lex. Take care. Anytime, bud.